Uh, we apologise for the delay. Uh, we hope we beat the rain. Um, and just to fill you in, uh, the O'Brien School of Drama was founded about six weeks back. <laughs> two weeks prior to the, to the last show. Uh, we've practiced a bit twice since. And uh, let's hope uh, it comes up trumps tonight. But before we start, we'd like to thank... That mic's not picking me up. <laughs> we'd like to thank uh, a few people. First of all, um, I'd like to thank the cast. Uh, I'd like to thank, obviously, you, the audience. As you know, uh, this script was adapted from a script I got in my uh, from a chap called Jerry Murphy through a friend of mine in PJ Carroll's called Mickey Ranahan. I'd like to say thank you to him. Uh, I'd like to say thank you to Mick Chandler and Tom McMahon for uh, putting the stage together. Uh, I'd like to say thanks to St. Mary's from Carr uh, and the Boys Club for the public address. Now, um, just to fill you in, this is all a bit of sport, folks. Nothing else but a bit of sport. Um, the setting, as you can see, is Castle Bellingham Community Centre, or what's left of it. <laughs> there is an extraordinary meeting just about to take place. On stage at the moment is Mrs. Fedigan, who is the caretaker of the centre. And coming on the stage will be the chairman of the Community Council, Tommy McGrory, and his secretary, uh, a Miss Olive Lynch. For you that do not know, which is very apt in the script, uh, Tommy McGrory is an ex Finnegale councillor from the area, and that's very apt. Just re remember that as the script goes along. Now, we'll ask one thing, please, because I, I got this feedback from the last night. Uh, you can laugh, hopefully, you can laugh, but less talking, because uh, some people, I believe, uh, walked away, they couldn't hear other people talking. And uh, as I said, we'll try and beat the rain. So, without further ado, we'll give you Lord Mayor Wanted. because I'm the chairman of this meeting. You have a very important task yes, here tonight. Me. Yes, you have a very important task. Your job is to make the applicants, this is a very important job, make them feel at home by giving them a cup of tea. But yes, for yes, God's sake, remember, you're not about gossip and creepers cross with Maureen Borden of the Lake. <laughs> <laughs> just remember what you're at, all right? Don't worry, Mr. Chairman. I don't gossip. You can rely on me. Mr. Going all night. Only he couldn't keep himself going all night. <laughs> okay, sorry, let's get ahead with this. Enough of the quips. I now declare open this extraordinary general meeting of Tassa Bellingham and District Community Council. Firstly, I wish to formally welcome you all to what's left of a once great community centre. It's, I know it's sad, but having Fine. said that, we have not slipped so far down that you have a bar installed here. And as long as I'm chairman of this meeting, that highly opinion is there. There'll be no dirty rod and drink for here. <laughs> well, that goes for you too. I'd like to now to call our, our honourable secretary, Miss Beck, or excuse me, I don't know what drink that's a bit specific, Miss Olive Lynch, for reading the minute from last week. Sorry, I keep getting confused. Go ahead, Miss Beck. Grant my good to get here, look, a card again. Minutes of Castle Valley and District Community Council held on the 31st of February last. The meeting recorded its shock and dismay <coughs> that our long-serving Lord Mayor, Mr Jack Stokes, was retiring from office. A long and lengthy discussion followed on a per possible person to succeed Jack. In order to get the right person, it might be necessary to go outside our area. However, it was agreed that the successful candidate should have some link, however remote, with this area. To this effect, Mr Paul McBride proposed we advertise for a candidate in all the Irish dailies. It's already proposed you wouldn't pay for it anyway. <laughs> the London Times, the Irish Press, the Argus, the Drawed Independent, the Dundalk Democrat, and the Parish Bulletin. 
He also said that he would pay the cost of all these ads. Another lady. Go ahead. <laughs> the motion was seconded by David O'Brien, and all present agreed. This ends the meeting, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Very efficient, as in your usual. Uh, well, uh, if that's a true record of the meeting, will please, somebody please propose the adoption of the minutes? I will, and my husband shall as well. That's how you forever put it. Follow me. You never do in your own. Get out. <laughs> <laughs> now, ladies and gentlemen, I shall report. I can report that I got 3,000 replies. In fact, Roisin, you know Roisin gets married to the innocent fellow Mickey Bourne. Roisin and, and Rosie down the street. They actually thought there was another local election in the way. There were so many letters through the post. And I wish to God there was, and I'd be back here. I'd be back one day. And I'm just going to know if I think it would be ever beyond an hour, even in the point. Anyway, anyway, from the application, I personally, and you know the good judge I am, Mr. I have whittled it down to a short list of four. Well, it's just, yeah, one, four, yeah. <laughs> well, I respect your opinion, Mr. Chairman, but I still think you'd have some good locals off the short list. Good locals? Yes. Like who? Like, um, Kevin Mags. Kevin Mags? You're after two drinks, you couldn't understand the word of it. <laughs> and I know, you say, Jack, who wants a Bruce Forsyth look alike for a dog now? <laughs> Um, Chopsy Riley. Chopsy Riley, it's what you're going. You mean Chops Riley from Cooper's Cross? You couldn't believe a word out of his mouth. She was married to Alice 20 years, and even she asked him to take, she had to check him in the shop before she would leave. Well, now, Mr. Chairman, David Eager is a man full of snog, war, sophistication. I think he would make the best mayor possible. Well, I'll tell you one thing, as you know, and you don't know him as long as I do, you're very young. Make a good mayor. Yes. If you knew as much about him as I did, you know what he'd make. He might make a good standing. I'll tell you what. <laughs> 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 I'm just saying, you know, I'm sorry. I'm talking around the end of the back. He's saying that. The one that had the television there a few weeks ago, the lady for three. He's going around, like, in the best things, he used to walk around, like, connect with the head round back and there. <laughs> he's smoking through there now, he thinks he's Pavarotti. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no. Now that's what I call one big man. <laughs> <laughs> and I, as you know, I like big men. You do, yeah. Well, don't be looking at me, Pat. <laughs> <laughs> Daisy Parker, from, from the top of the village. Yeah. Well, you know, whoever gets this job as Lord Mayor to have a fair wee bit of walking to do, you know, up and down a parade. <laughs> well, now, this is, I won't tell him this to you, I'm not going to tell it to them. <laughs> Daisy's dad lazy. When he's coming down the street for a drink, he takes the car out. She's going to walk in and you don't even have Last Saturday night, we're sitting in there all night, and Verona says, well, she was delayed. Daisy, you're not drinking. He says, no, there's a puncture outside, and I'm, I'm, I'm stuck in the house all night. So we're getting him out of here. Oh, right, all right, Mr. Chairman. Well, I suppose for one minute you didn't think of a woman, and I know one great woman in this area, Geraldine Hack. <laughs> a great woman, Geraldine Hack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, actually, I thought she was a great woman myself. You know, it's, it's fair, it's fair. But I was actually talking to Brian on the way down, and, you know, actually, she was just outside there, outside the front of the gate, Captain, and she was tipping down to his usual few points of and He was going to, you know, like, unfortunately, Brian had a bit of an accident. Like, I walked in, he was going to buy it. For a minute, I thought it was Skippy the Kangaroo, the way he was going to buy it. And I asked him, I know, he said, Brian, what about Jeremy? You know what he said to me? He said, she's as much chance of becoming Lord Mayor as needs have a wooden next year's chance. And you know, you know, you know who follows these? Mickey Borden, and he couldn't pick a nose. Well, I give up. You obviously don't want to know. I didn't say that, did I? No. Okay, let's start the interviews. I'm fed up talking to you or listening to you all day. Mrs. Ferrigan, are you still there? I'm out of glory. Uh, Show in the first candidate, uh, Mr. Jack Charles. Mr. Charlton, will you kick off proceedings? <laughs> Jonathan, follow Tim and Dumpy. <laughs> <laughs> Child, would you mistake me for him? 
He's more like Miley or Jamie McMahon. Whereas I'm more a sophisticated type, like Patty King. Mr. Chairman! Excuse me a second, please. I'm the boss, you know. Please, just stick to taking the, you know, I'll do the interview, and you just stick to recording me. No problem. But by the way, you're, you're right, Jack. That don't be as a bollocks that I do. Mr. Charles, what's your connections with the area of Castle Bellingham? Right. Well, I'm a member of both the Castle Bellingham Gun Club and the Glide East Fishing Club. Mm -hmm. Not too many fellas around here are members of clubs, they'll tell you that to do a lot of the other not members anyway. I suppose then I'd be right to say, Jack, you're, you're taking a bit of fishing on your business. That's right, Mr. Chairman. Last night, myself and Jack and McKeever went over as far as Kincara. We caught two beautiful trout. Mind you, it was a bumpy ride on the way home. And I don't mean the nurses, I mean them bloody potholes. <laughs> I don't want any potholes. If only I was still a council around this area, there'd be no potholes. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, please, enough about potholes. Mr. Charlton, where did you hear about this job? Well, I heard it from my good friend, Pope John Paul, the last time I met him there in Italy. Oh, Pope John Paul, 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 Pope no, please, no salary. Please don't tell me that. Jim, I ask you, what attracts you to the job? The salary, of course. What salary? You haven't mentioned salary. Well, that nice lady, Mrs. Fenton. Exactly, Ken. She's not a white man. But she told me I'd earn more of this job than I do at present. And Jesus, God knows that wouldn't be hard. Well, I'm sorry, Jack. I'm, I, again, I keep apologizing for the nitwits that's around me, me being such an intelligent person. I'm sorry, Jack. M Mrs. Fenton, she misled you. There is no salary. However, if you are lucky, you might get some of Simon Fagan. You know Simon Fagan, he was over the village for a drink and out when something fired. Well, you. You, might, you, might, you, you might get some of Simon's homegrown salary. Simon is preferring to go with the green fingers. Mr. Chairman, they're not as homegrown. They probably bought them a crazy price. No, but that's wrong straight away. Simon never bought that in his life, no. <laughs> Jack, uh, can, I, can I take it and you're not interested in this position? Well, no, Mr. Chairman, I didn't say that. Yes, I must be deaf. Go ahead. <laughs> well, anyway, well, thank, thank God that's that. Uh, Jack, I mean, realize all you did for the country. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, on the way you left the pop. Yeah, we're not worried about that. Uh, uh, I just want to ask you a simple little question. Uh, if you get this job, Jack, uh, what have you got to offer this area? That's what you're trying to do. Just get how to get it. Yeah, what have you got to offer this area? Well, first of all, I could hold fishing classes. Teach Ronnie Linden and his mates her best to catch fish using the rod. Oh, well, that's out of the question straight away. Ronnie Linden, now I know Ronnie well. Ronnie only lives down the road from, you know what I mean, the Sea Road Cooper's Cross. Ronnie's fishing for 25, well, about 25 years. And he's been, you know, a very careful fisherman. Oh, yeah, Mr. Chairman. He's never used a rod in his life. <laughs> no, no, no. Right, right, right. And then secondly, seeing that the Loud County Board can't fix it for the country team to play in the Grove. So I can get the FAI to play a full international on it. That's an idea. <coughs> Would you have to say that, Miss Secretary? Well, now, Benny Sands couldn't be too happy with that. And Anthony Clark probably more than likely will call another extraordinary general meeting of the O'Connell. Where is it? <laughs> right. Well, folks, my turn for the question. Are there any fringe benefits? I'm sure you know that um, high class you made from many, many decades ago, uh, Mr. Sean Geeney. Oh, yeah, he yeah. could see the benefits of a fringe. Believe you me. <laughs> 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 I mean, that's, I mean, I'm not going to talk about Sean Geeney when he's not here, but I don't need that sort of thing. I'd just like to say, I'd just like to say one thing. That was your footballer, Jack. No, no, I'm not. But just, I'm just talking about you. <laughs> How good he was when he, when he was in his heyday playing in the group. You know, he used to jump very high. You know, oh, 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 oh. I, I, he used to go that high for the ball. Then Air is on, on the match days to have it just divert the route. <laughs> and what happened at the high level issue was to play the women down, not the man. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, it's amazing. Did he ever catch the ball? Mr. Charlton, he was like Cinderella, always missing the ball. <laughs> Anyway, that's not quite true, but ladies and gentlemen, we're not going to talk about these But I, I want to say something, secretary. I believe there's a few freebies going with this job, uh, whoever gets it. Do you know what about that? Well, that is true. Um, but your own Hannity will supply you with all your free beef for your trip to America in 1994. Yeah, that's a nice gesture from Owen. Somebody else must be. Watch out. Make sure it's safe. Not the best for Jack's army. Yeah, that's fair juice. I'm Jeremy McMillan of Concrete. We'll supply you with all of the blocks you need to
finally, John Keenan has agreed to supply you with all the free cigars you need. Well, it's just the way I've agreed to give them up with the wife after we win the World Cup. Oh, we have a Next year, of course. Finally, Mr. Charlton, if you get this uh, position, when could you possibly start? I'm ready, ready to take up this position in the summer of 94 when we bring home the cup. Well, I'll tell you one thing, John, I was very impressed. I wish you all the best. No, really, I thought it was a very good interview. Oh, exactly. I just want to say one thing, too, just, you know, off the cuff. If you're stuck for a centre forward, give him a brawl, you shout. I'll just <laughs> I think I'd rather call Vinnie Jones. <laughs> you won't get the job, I'll tell you that. Hey, mister, that was so-so interview. What do you think of him? I thought he was so-so. The husband, yeah. I have the well, movie that's happened. You're, you're fairly so-so yourself, that's what you've been in your soul. So I didn't think about it, man. I'll tell you that, he's getting his pockets laced round here. Round here? Yeah, he's getting free salmon, free drink, free everything. He's, he's not going to get any more of that round here, all right? I'm actually, I'm, you know what I mean, I'm, I'm a little bit lukewarm, but now that the night's getting colder, I'm, I'm, I'm going off now together. <laughs> no, 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 I don't think so. But there should be better candidates. Well, I hope there is. Somebody, you know, just with a bit more, maybe even a female, a bit more right. Is, is, is there anything else around the place for it? Where's Mrs. Fedigan? Mrs. Fedigan! Are you there? I'm here. Oh, she's oh, there. Yeah, all right. Miss Whiplash! Who? You're next. <laughs> You hear you come in! <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
thought she did not know. Well, maybe you did not know, but you spoke in his sleep. Right. Your name for that, did he matter? And he kept saying, You never had it so bad. You know, I know John quite well, a very well-known personality around the area, John. Oh, yes. He's a businessman, I believe. Well, yes, we know there are quite a few businesses in this game. Yes, yeah. And tell me what you can say. How do you drop me? <laughs> well, actually, I, I, I wasn't going to continue with that line, I really was but I mean, I just, now that you've mentioned it, now, this is only between you and me. No, actually between you and me. No, this is only between you and me, only between you and me, actually. There's a, a gentleman, well, not a gentleman, yeah, Charlie Swan. And Charlie Swan, as you all know, he's the current national hunt uh, champion. Now, Coxie has made a laugh at Charlie. And I'll tell you why. Charlie has written a hundred winners last season, and he thinks he's the first man to have done that. And I can tell you quietly, Coxie was doing that 20 years ago. And, and excuse me, Miss Whiplash, What's more, he had to go across the water for his mouth's <laughs> eye. <laughs> Daniel, tell me this, please. Get, get away from that. How did you come to hear about the job? On one of my recent visits to America, I read about it in the Washington Post. Mm. I mean, could I ask you, please, you know, an obvious question, what most are you trying to do to the job? Well, the job is tax-free, and as you know, I have a position on a little gold mine. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't think you like paying taxes. Well, then, other than the obvious, eh? Other than the, yeah, we can all see the obvious. Other than the obvious, eh, what have you got to offer this area? Well, I could uh, maybe discipline the place and put some of the naughty boys in shape. You know? That'd be Constructive nature to offer Captain Bellingham? Mm -hmm. Well, with all the politicians I've pushed through my hands, <laughs> I could maybe persuade one of them to go and stick a factory in this area, such as for pubic hair conditioner. For that last comment, please, then, you know, don't call us, I call you. <laughs> Oh, sh well, please, okay. sh I don't want to know about that. Just write them down to that little packet there. <laughs> 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 oh, oh, in case you can't read my writing, my number is 69. That's interesting. 69. <laughs> Remember, you're not hanging out in your usual haunts now in London and Soho or such. You're in a very respectable, nice little rural area, Tassabelli. And, and excuse me, public is not allowed to have that. I do love you. Yes, public is not allowed. 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 Public is not allowed.
that will be later on. I'm actually as fit as a fit. Thank you. You can fit with me any time. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my God. 
to be quite faithful. I note on your application form, you wrote down in the co common column the word perks. What do you mean by perks? Oh, yes, are there any perks in the job? Apart from him. <laughs> yes, they are, Mr. Hoy. But seeing that you have your free bus pass would not be one of them. However, a few business people have come up with a few ideas. Oh, now you're talking in my language. <laughs> oh, my dear child. Well, a small race horse trainer will train your horse free of charge for a year. John Morgan will give you a reliable and trustworthy cab list, which I believe you're not used to. Larry Hubbard has given you enough, as we all know. Here, here. Finally, Lord McShane will give you 20 to 1. I'm feeling for becoming the next government of France. I told you, mate. How are we getting the seat back? Excuse, excuse me, please. Excuse me, Madam Secretary. There's just uh, one other little favour we're going to get from one of the locals you forgot to mention. And what should that be? Uh, James Clark up the road. He'll give him all the bullshit he needs for his <laughs> Sure, as I am sure you know. And I'm proud of it, not the longer music, I'm proud of it. Oh yes, Mr. Steddigan told me on the way in that he'd asked to see him in the last elections. And as I said before, no doubt. There's no chance he'll ever get it back. That's what you think. Oh, that's right, oh, sorry, that's right, oh. Have you any other questions, Mr. Hoy? Oh yes, when do I start? <laughs> in the village. Where would that be? CJ's guest house across the I road. I've been a four stars here. I've been a there already. The was all... And by the way, I've installed a brand new sunbed that would tan your hide a lot better than Miss Whitlack with Don't tan your hide if you're doing better. Take them away. Mrs. Ferrigan. Mr. Hawley, that would be a pleasure. We will be in touch with you. No, I'll be with you. I know you will. I know you will. Sit down, Mr. Chairman. Don't you say me. I was going to the toilet. I wasn't standing up for you. Thank you. I would rather have you kept the seat warm for yes. me. <laughs> that was the man of all men, Mr. Chairman. He yeah. really was. The man of all men. He knows, knows the type of person you're going around with. You call him a man. I tell you, Wonnie, I don't know how he got in here in the first place. Gareth Fitzgerald should have been. Not at all, not at all, not at all. Well, tell us this, at this stage, what proceedings are going on? We want to get in here over the year all night. Where are we now? We have three candidates gone. What this three? Is the one, two, three. This is the fourth and final one, isn't it? Yes. This uh, is Mrs. Fadigan. Mrs. Fadigan! <laughs> uh, will, you, will you please, we've come to the fourth and final interview now. Will you please bring him in now? Is there anyone there or who is he? Mr. Madman Hooping! Will you trace the fairing point? Can I hope Miss Whiplash becomes wife number seven? Can I hope Miss Whiplash becomes wife number seven? Thank you, dear. 
Well, could I ask you a question, Mr. Osei? Where, where, where is this Republican Guard now? They are on the outskirts of the city. <laughs> I will call them into battle if I do not get this job. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I'm going, I'm going, Miss Ferrington can call the rest of the meeting. I'm away, I told my mother... Get your ass back there! Get your ass back there! Get your ass back there, please! Mr. Osei, simmer down, simmer down! No, no, no! Simmer down, Jack Lynch is over there, there. Jack was here to say, simmer down there! Simmer down there, Jack, that'll do it! Uh, Mr. Osei, again, I'm not, it's, it's quite embarrassing for me. Uh, the, the part of the person like me being in this position being embarrassed all the time with something like this beside me. I just want to ask you, you're fairly welcome again. Mr. Osei, what, what are your connections with this area? I have got a pen pal in the area. <laughs> He writes to me every week and sends me the local paper. Can I ask you a simple little question? If you're not, you know what I mean? Don't smile at all, Mr. Osei. All you can see, that's understandable. Who is he? He is a local mother. Mr. Osei, thank you for looking at me, Mr. Osei. Who is the mother? Is the mother in Jamaican? But there's no one up here. Well, the only one I know is Sean Mullins and you said the group of frogs is up in the south now, it's not him. And uh, could I ask you a simple little question, Mr. Sidney? What, 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 what is a mullet? In a rat, a mullet is a priest with a long bow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my dear, it's all of What? <laughs> I lead in the dark Democrat with the Bellingham branch of the ICA. <laughs> So is it funny if I deserve the best? You want to take it off the SBA themselves. <laughs> and uh, why do you want sorry, why do you want to meet Mr. Goodman? You probably know my country owes him a lot of money for beef he supplied to us. 
And I would like to, as you are, say, settle your cup. <laughs> I also want back my helicopter. <laughs> Is Mr. Goodman a rich man? Oh, we believe rumour has it, yeah. He's like a around in the mouth where we can have a paper. But we believe he is, yeah. He is, yeah. Well, why does he live in the field and not in the house? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Hussein, not the town, it's the area. Yeah. Why, he lives in the biggest house in the parish. In fact, if you follow all those slurry times you see around the place, it'll leave you straight over. <laughs> yeah, I just, after, have you any other questions? You know, feel free then. Relax yourself there, relax the pod. Have you any other questions, Dan? I would also like to meet Councillor Mihal Dona. Mihal who? Mihal Dona. Dona. And can I ask you? Look, he's not around Village. We never did that for Village. We never did that for anyone. But I would. Why, why do you want to meet him? I read in on Dark Democrat many years ago when the helicopter came down in Carroll's factory. He said he would blow it out of the sky. <laughs> If I could get that secret, I could deal with them battering gags. <laughs> well, I'll tell you one thing. I'd love to tell you where he lives, but unfortunately, I haven't got a clue of you. Not a clue. Not a clue. There's no one around here knows. <laughs> yeah, Jackson, Jesus, thanks to God, I told no, 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 There's no. one client around the place I know. She knows everything. <laughs> Mrs. Seafax. She was the second. She was the only one who knows. Not only would she tell you where he lives, she'd probably tell you what he had for his breakfast. Or what he had for his breakfast. <laughs> That's it, yeah. Mr. Seafax will also tell you who else is in hiding as well. Don't worry about it. Contact well, her. Yeah, I, I think you know, at that stage, that's about it. That, that, that's all, I think. But how do I get to the mosque of the cotton crow? <laughs> <laughs> you know, cotton crow. Well, I'd love to direct you there, but without pointing you up in or wherever, I don't want to go near the place. Thanks to God, I was never and never going to go near it. It's half eleven now. You probably wouldn't get in. There's no chance we're not to pull the cotton out. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Hussein, Side door. I knock on the middle window on the right hand side and go. And you get in, no problem. But how do I get there? I didn't get you a lift with the pub spy. The pub spy? Who's that? Pub spy? Who's that? He asked for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you one thing, if you're getting a lift up the road with Pierce, I hope he's a steering wheel in the car. <laughs> I hope he is not looking for a job in my army. Here, and why is that, Mr. Sain? Because the men in my army have to cross the border. Oh! <laughs> Number one Republican in the face, he hears you saying that to be a civil war here again. That's the truth. Oh, my God! That's the truth. Have you anything to say? I have nothing more to say. I can't decide. What's that? Who's that? <laughs> Mrs. Ferrigan, there's somebody at the door. Mrs. Ferrigan, will you get up off the toilet and see who's at the door for God's sake? <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Ferrigan, where are you? Where are you? Oh, Jesus, that's Bishop Casey. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> ah, she's only caught and she's not here at all. No, he's not here. Don't be teasing the man. <laughs> 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 
Take it away. It's one thing you to have that kind of thing. Put that away. I just want to ask your eminence, your highness, your holiness, or whatever you want to call yourself. Can't for question. <laughs> what, what takes you to this neck of the, the, the woods? I mean, tell us about it. I said the near quarries can be stones crushed. <laughs> I want Richard Casey. Are you on your own? No, I need to go with Hans Talbot George Conley. <laughs> if you go with her, she won't be talking to me listening, but I don't get to go with her. Hey, that's me to say the town crop next week, you good for nothing. Could I, could I ask you one, Bishop? Like, I realise all you did for every night. <laughs> Exactly, honestly, you know, you did for the whole world, but what have you got, Your Eminence? What could you do for us personally? You know, what could you do for this area? There's a fellow friend of the area. Mm, that's good. I hear a fellow walking up on a fish of it in the morning. You got the crack of dawn, Mr. Mike, let me get up at the crack of dawn, not on the crack of dawn. I'm going to see Jack Lynch with you, I'll tell you that. Your mind is like a cesspot, a cesspot. <laughs> Could do. Secondly, I could help Father Murphy collect all the exciting throw bugs in the area. I want to give a throw bugs to the army! I want to give a throw bugs to the army! I want to give a throw bugs to the army! I want to give a throw bugs to the army! I want to give a throw bugs to the army! I want to give a throw bugs to the army! I want to give a throw bugs to the army! I want to give a throw bugs to the army! I want to give a throw bugs to the army! I want to give a throw bugs to the army! I want to give a throw bugs to the army! I want to give a throw bugs to the army! I want to give a throw bugs to the army! I want to give a throw bugs to the army! I want to give a throw bugs to the army! I want to give a throw bugs to the army! I want to give a throw bugs to the army! I want to give a throw bugs to the army! I want to give a throw bugs to the army! I want to give a throw bugs to the army! I want to give a throw bugs to the army! I want to give a throw bugs to the army! I want to give a throw bugs to the army! I want to give a throw bugs to the army! I want to give a throw bugs to the army! I want to give a throw bugs to the army! I want to give a Be a winner here at the end of the day. 
I want to let you know that. Bishop, you two. Oh, no, no, sorry, sorry. Bishop, two, two. Oh, you two. Oh, I can't follow her. No, 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 no. Don't no, no. <laughs> have a bit of respect, you, will you? Bishop, two, two. What takes you to this place? I am here to represent my country in the Eurovision Song Contest. <laughs> Bishop, you, 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 how is that? How is that? How is that? When the... No, just one to get <laughs> When the Pope heard about Annie Murphy and myself, he banished me to Latvia. <laughs> he was on the duty as on the Oh, please. Let us sing our song. I wrote it specially for Annie and for our good day with coming up in July. This is this I'll tell you one. This, this is this is unbelievable. This is something you twist in the story. Nobody knows. And we have the exclusive rights of this story here in Castle Bellingham. And what what is pray tell us, what is the name of the song? Two little boys. <laughs> No, no, the man, fair to you know, he's not got to look around, but he's a table. We're not going to be quiet over here just because he's a wee blad. <laughs> just, just, just one verse. It's very late now, fancy for him, and nobody will pay for it you don't finish up. Just one verse. It's getting very late now. Will, will you be able to sing it in your own? Or? I don't think so. I um, mean, you, but nobody else is going to sing it. Two little boys had two little toys. Each had a one in heart. Annie. And I wonder if we remember when they were the sweetest. This is John and this is Paul. John Paul. I don't believe, darling, we made a mistake. We will go to Oriya Park. Because after last week, they need a black man on the team. <laughs> Stop! 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 Stop!
some cheeky. Now don't be so cheeky. Well, who's your choice? Well, naturally, Charlie would have to get my number one. I think You've got a good few ones in this day, I tell you that. What can I do to the list? Well, to say a cap is anything nothing like that, Dad, I would have to yeah. give it to the man who wants it Yeah, six wives have given it, that's enough. <laughs> okay, let's call them all back. It's the session time now. The, 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 the meet is over tonight. Mrs. Fanny! Call them all, Mrs. Fanny! Come on, get them all back on, will you? Come on, take them all on the stage. No, we should get them now, that's it. Well, we'll have a new now.